If your TypeScript code looks like this, you're making your life so much harder since TypeScript is actively working against you. Instead, you need to use discriminating unions, which are one of the best features in TypeScript and make it so much fun to work in. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And the reason why writing your TypeScript code like this is so bad is because when you try to use it, you get tons of errors like this, which make it impossible to write good TypeScript code. Even if you go through and fix these errors, your code is still not very safe. And the reason for that is essentially this location state is trying to represent three different states that our data can be in. We can either be in the loading state, the success state, or the error state. If we're in the loading state, obviously we have no error message and we have no coordinates, so this essentially doesn't exist. If we're in the success state, well, our coordinates are loaded since now we have the GPS location, but obviously we have no error, so this thing doesn't exist. And if we're in the error state, well, we were unable to get the coordinates, so this doesn't exist, but we do have an error. So there's kind of three distinct states that we can be in. Right now, our code says that we can be in the loading state, but we can also have coordinates and we can also have an error at the same time. We could be in the success state and both of these could be missing. It doesn't know if these things are there or not based on the state that we're in. So what we need to do is swap this over to a discriminating union. Essentially, anytime you have distinct states like this, you probably want to use a discriminating union. And the best way to use this is to just extract out this one type into all of its different types that it can be. So we have three different states we can be in, so we should probably create a type for each one of those. For example, we have our loading location state, and we know that that means that our state is just set to loading because that's the only thing in here. We don't have the coordinates, we don't have an error message. We know if we're in the loading state, the only possible thing that can be set is our state as loading. The next type that we have is our success location state. And inside of this one, our state here is going to be set to success. So we can set that. And we know that our coordinates are going to be there. So instead of making these optional, we're going to make them required like this. Now, the final thing we have left is our error state. So we can come in here. We can name this our error location state. Our status is going to be error. And instead of having coordinates, we're now going to have an error message. But again, this error message is going to be required because if we're in the error state, we will always have an error message. We can kind of minimize these three down for now. And instead, we can take our location state and say that it's just going to be one of these three types. So it's either going to be loading, success, or error location, just like this. Now, immediately by making that one single change, you can see all the errors down here have completely gone away. And the reason for that is since we have one specific type, this in our case is a state. You can see we have a state here as our specific key. This is a literal value that is different between all of our different types. When you have this one key that is different between multiple types and you union them all together, that's considered a discriminating union. And when you do things like if checks or switch statements, you can determine which one of those types you're in. Because right now we're saying, okay, our case is loading for our state. So if our state is loading, only one of our three types has a loading state. So we know that we're in this type. And we can see that because if I go to do my autocomplete here, you'll notice the only property I get is state. And when I hover over this, you can see the type of this is loading location state. So it knows what type we are. Same thing down here for success. You can see that this location is now a success location state because the only one of our types here that has a successful status is this one right here. And you can see here for my autocomplete, the only two properties I get are coordinates and state and the coordinates here are required. They're always going to be there. So I don't have to worry about those null checks. Same thing down here for my error message. This is again a required property because this is in the error location state. So again, anytime you have multiple states, breaking it out like this is going to be the best thing you can do for type safety because it makes your code so much easier to read, first of all, and it makes it way easier to use. Now, the one downside to this is that you can only do this with literal values. So things like strings or numbers or any other literal value. You can't do it with types though. For example, let's say that we brought this down to just two different types. We have our loading and our success type. And let's say here, I want to say my state is a string in the loading status, but when it's successful, I'm going to say that this is a number instead. Now, if I came down here to do a quick little if check, so I could say if the type of location.state is equal to a string, well, if we look at our code, we know for a fact the only state that can be a string is this loading one. So you'd think we're in the loading state, but if we just console.log our location, you'll see that our location still is just a general location state. It doesn't know which one of these it's in. And when I try to do this check here, you can see the only thing we have access to is our state. 
Now, if I say that this is a number, we should have access here to these coordinates, but you'll notice when I do my autocomplete, it still only gives me access to the state property itself. And again, our location is just that location state. It doesn't know which one of these two it is actually supposed to be. Now, this is again, just a downside of the way TypeScript works. You can't do discriminations on generic types like this. It must be on a literal type. That's the only way that you can do a discriminating union. Now, if you wanna learn even more TypeScript, I highly recommend checking out my TypeScript simplified course. It's going to take you from a JavaScript developer to a TypeScript developer in just one single day. So I highly recommend checking that out. I'll again link those in the description for you.